Obviously, I don't have to remind you, gentlemen, that this meeting never took place. Of course not, Mayor Blossom. Has Ethel Muggs been talking much since she's been with the sisters? Not a peep. The Sister Woodhouse has imposed a vow of silence. Very good. What about the PTA? Parents are still upset. It's all they talk about at our meetings. Who killed Mr. and Mrs. Muggs? As long as people remain focused on this murder case, the more precarious our grasp of the situation becomes. What's the sheriff's office doing? Tom is trying to find this milkman and the murder weapon. Why is he doing that? I have the murder weapon right here. What are you getting at, Friedrich? We have to stop rehashing the Muggs murder case and start making sure that something like it never happens again. Uh, in my extensive research, in case after case, comic books are the influencing factor in most incidents of juvenile delinquency and teen violence. They are a moral scourge, gentlemen, and their creators, criminal degenerates. That's what the PTA should be talking about. Comic books, not the Muggses. And I believe I know exactly how to make that happen. Well, look who strolls in whenever his heart desires. What do you want, kid? I was just in the neighborhood. Where is everyone? They're all out with a stomach bug. No, I'm under more water than the Titanic. Can I help? I need a full issue. I can do that. Written by tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's no problem, Mr. Fieldstone. I'm, I'm fast. I'm a great speller. Four stories, seven pages each, zero margin for error. I'll write them on spec. If you like them, then great. And if not, there's plenty more where that came from. All right. If you have trouble coming up with some ideas, take these springboards, talk them through with Bernie. I will. Won't let you down. Bernie! In the early 1950s, as the nation experienced an increase in juvenile crime, an assortment of critics, psychiatric, literary, and political, charged that comic book stories bred youthful miscreants. Alarmed because the critics appeared to enlist greater and greater public support, particularly in governmental bodies with the power to enact controlling legislation, comic book publishers formed in 1954 an association to censor their product, cleansing it of objectionable content. The Comics Magazine Association of America was incorporated in September 1954 with John Goldwater of Archie Comics as president. I was its prime founder, Goldwater said. Its purpose was to adopt a code of ethics to eliminate editorial and advertising material which was inimical to the best interests of the comic book industry as well as its readers. I succeeded in cooperation with industry leaders to quell the uproar and eliminate legislation which it is said could have put the comics industry in dire straits if not out of business altogether. The CMAA's chief function was to review in advance of publication every page of every comic book produced by its member publishers to assure that all comic books obeyed the comics code. Goldwater was one of the principal authors of the code, which consisted of 41 prohibitions concerning the betrayal of crime, violence, religion, sex, horror, nudity, and the like in both editorial and advertising pages. No unique or unusual methods of concealing weapons shall be shown. Profanity, obscenity, smut, vulgarity, or words or symbols which have acquired undesirable meanings are forbidden. Writing of the creation and history of the CMAA later in his book, Americana in Four Colors, 1964, Goldwater said, Taken together, these provisions constitute the most severe set of principles for any communications media in use today, restricting the use of many types of material permitted by the Motion Picture Code and the codes for the television and radio industries. The day-to-day -day enforcement of the code was performed by the Comics Code Authority, a panel of reviewers that operated under the direction of a full-time paid administrator. Comic books that passed the review carried the CMAA seal of approval on their covers. The Comics Code soon drove out of the industry several comic book publishers whose product could not pass the review and still retain its essential appeal. The most celebrated of these was EC Comics, which had inaugurated an industry-wide trend of horror comic books. 
Bill Gaines, EC's publisher, more than once rather strenuously suggested that it was to put EC Comics out of business more than any other motive that inspired John Goldwater, who was, if we are to judge from Gaines' alleged remark, every bit the prime mover that he claimed he was. Goldwater served as CMAA president for 25 years until he voluntarily relinquished the office, whereupon the board of directors created the position of chairman of the board, in which capacity Goldwater served for several years.